Number 14 then from the 2019 Advanced Tire Maths, 5 marks for Proof by Induction. Prove by induction that this statement is in fact correct. And look, it's a summation one. You like those summation ones, don't you? But it's a factorial that's in it. It's the first time I've seen a factorial. It doesn't make it any harder though. Well, so the process is, first of all, check if it works in the first place at the start. Test it for n equals 1. Well, if n equals 1, there's a left-hand side. What happens on the left-hand side if it goes just from 1 to 1? That'll just be 1 factorial times 1, which is 1. What happens on the right-hand side? Well, that will be 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. Now, 2 factorial, just put it in. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, just put 2. 2 minus 1, which is also 1. That means that since the left-hand side equals the right-hand side... You can write true for, notice there's actually a missing noun, or whatever that grammatical term is, true for n equals 1, because there is actually a name to that. You just tend not to use it. Usually they're called a proposition. This is a proposition which has various parts of it in terms of n. That's the proposition, and you can see p is true, so that would be p1 I've just worked out here, for instance. But I think you can... You're, it's sort of conventional that you miss out the nouns when you're writing these statements. So, there's the first bit. True for n equals 1. Now, you're not going to go in and then try 2, 3, 4, 5, because you would never stop. That's the whole point about this. So what you do is you jump to some random point. We're going to make an inductive hypothesis. So let's just assume it's true then. Assume it's true further on at some point. Assume true for n equals any arbitrary point beyond 1. Well, it includes 1 as well, really. Well, if that's the case, that means if you go from, if you sum from r to k of r factorial r, the answer should be k plus 1 factorial minus 1. Now, what would happen for the next step? So consider that. Consider the case where you've gone one step beyond k plus 1. Well, in that case, you can have, I'll just move it here so they don't clash, the summation from r is 1 to k plus 1. Well, you know with summations, they just keep adding extra terms. The only difference between these two is I've added one extra term. That will just be the same as the summation up to k plus the extra term, which is, of course, given by this part here the formula for the individual terms in the summation. And with that being a k plus 1, it means you're adding on a k plus 1 factorial times k plus 1. Well, what does that all come to? Well, that was your inductive hypothesis. You're saying, well, I think this bit is going to be given by this. It's going to be given by k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So it should have that plus another. Just add on that last term. Now you just have to fiddle about. Now the thing is, you know what you're aiming for. Sometimes you can have a wee sneak preview of the answer. Because if I've got k plus 1, I should be hoping for, according to that, k plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. That's what I'm aiming for. And if that turns into that, it means we've done it. Right, what can we do? Common factors. Notice there's three terms here, but there's only common factors of two of them, because I'm not really interested in that negative one. It just floats about to the side. So taking that out of it, I've got a common factor of k plus 1 factorial. There's one of them there, and there's k plus 1 of them there. I'll just leave it inside a wee bracket to emphasise its individuality. And then minus 1. Oh, it's looking good, isn't it? k plus 1 factorial, because that's k plus 2. And if you know your factorials, that just means the sequential multiplication from that value down in integral steps. So k plus 1 factorial starts from k plus 1 and goes down, k, k minus 1. So if I put in a k plus 2, it means you've now got a k plus 2 factorial. And that's what I want. I'll just emphasise the fact that that's the same form as this by writing k plus 1 
plus one. Not good at putting the factorial then. That's now demonstrated it. I can now say okay, that then. is the required result. That's exactly what I What's wanted. Done? That's the required okay. result. Whoops. For n equals k plus one. Now I just have to make all the statements. Well, what did that do? Well, if that was the required result, that means that this was the case. This meant that if, something you missed out as well, if true for n equals k, that meant it was true for n equals k plus 1. That was the whole point of this. If p was true when n equals k, this said, then p is certainly true for k plus 1, n equals k plus 1. Then, since it is true for n equals 1, then by the stepping stone principle, it's true for all n. We don't say by the stepping stone principle, because true for 1, true for 2, true for 2, true for 3. You then say that means by induction from within, by induction, it is true for all n, and it said positive integers, but that's the same as the natural numbers. There we go then. I was just walking away from it there and I noticed I hadn't put in that little factorial. Well, I told you. To get the required result.